Twitch. What up, guys, and welcome to well, Mr. And Mr. Floppy plays Rust. Basically, all I'm gonna do in this episode is give you a quick rundown of I don't know the build features, hunting, looting. Probably no PvP in this episode, as this is just a basic Rust 101 guide. So all we're gonna do is establish a base. So we'll build a one by one up in the mountains. Uh, get bow. We'll do a bit of hunting. Might end up looting some rad towns probably. That might come in part two, but hopefully we can get around to that in episode one. But first of all, as you can see, these are some pretty big player built houses around here. And I have someone shooting a shotgun not too far away. Down in small rad, it's down there. So what we're gonna do is you can't hit these trees for wood, but I should only get one wood per turn. I personally wouldn't recommend doing that. I would probably recommend hitting these. The wood piles give you seven wood for a rock. Uh also, seven wood for a stone hatchet, ten wood for a proper iron hatchet or metal hatchet, which is made from wood and metal fragments. And then you get twenty per hit with a pickaxe. But the chances of you find having well, you have no pickaxe to start off with. Find pickaxes from the rad or blood animals you'll find dotted around the map. The are the animals over there, which I went past earlier which we will go and kill later on when I have a bow but the first thing you want to try and get in my opinion is get a nice stone hatchet because it makes gathering a lot lot easier than gathering it with a stone the stone is very very inefficient in my opinion but saying that for this video we're gonna go and have a little venture over into a place called um, Hack Valley <laughs> Don't worry, it's not full of hackers like the name would imply. It's, I think, originally when this used to be either first released in early alpha or back when it was on the browser-based game a long time ago before I got greenlit on Steam, it was where the where all the hackers would live. I think I could be wrong in saying this, but it's a good place to build your first base because there's not a lot of people go here. And there's also a lot of resources. So even I, uh, with 600 hours playtime on Rust, occasionally will build up here depending on what the rest of the map looks like. It's not my favorite place to build. I personally enjoy building on the other side of this mountain where we were a second ago. Because that gives you easy access to the rad towns. But if you're a new, if you're a new, if you're a noob to the game, if I can talk, I would definitely recommend building either here or somewhere that's not miles out of the way from everywhere, but somewhere where you'll get a bit of privacy, just so you can get a feel to the game of collecting, actually get a house, and you're not just being killed over and over and over again, which can happen, and has happened, and will happen, you will die on Rust, you will lose your stuff, it happens to everyone, so... I say try not to get butt hurt, as people say in the chat, when you lose your shit, because you will, you will lose your stuff. So, right, as you can see, there's three different colors of rocks. There's this one, which has a slightly yellowy, goldy glow, or tinge. This gives you the most, like, sulfur ore, which you can put in a furnace and cook down and make sulfur. There's this one over here, which you'll see in a second, looks slightly silvery. These are the ones that give you most metal ore, which obviously you put in the furnace and cut down to make metal fragments, which is used for the likes of metal, well, metal doors, any sort of metal building supplies, and so on, but we'll get into that later. Once I collected this, I would have thought I'll have enough. You 
press tab to open your inventory, you get your crafting lifts down the side. If it's not here, press the crafting tab up at the top, and that opens and closes it. And then you want to like click on what you want to build. So we want to build a stone hatchet. So you click on this, and here are what you need, and here is what you have in your inventory. This is just literally plus like however many you want to build. If you hold the control button and then press the plus, it will build you, it will set it to craft as many as you possibly can. So that's good for later on in the game, where say if you want to craft 100 wooden planks, it saves you having to click 100 times, you can just click it once. But again, that will be more handy later on in the game. So anyhow, once you've got a hatchet, you can discard your rock, because you won't really need a rock from now. And every time you die, you spawn in with a rock in your inventory in case you don't have anything to gather with. And as you can see now, I gather a lot faster. I still get the same amount of resources out of this at the moment, but I do gather a lot faster than I was before. And we need to aim for about 500 wood give or take for the house you can build a shack which costs 50 wood and that's it i personally wouldn't recommend the shack as the doors can just be broken down by hitting on them and the shack itself can be broken down even if you put a metal door down so again if you're new to the game you could build a shack whilst you're collecting resources so you have somewhere to go bear in mind that it's very easy to break down and once it's broken down obviously you then have to build a new shack so it depends what you want to do it does give you somewhere to haul up overnight time but then again this being said i would recommend uh bumping your gram your, your gamma up even which will make it much much easier for you to see at night time I haven't done that in this, so for the night time I will be using my torch, which again you spawn in with. So it makes it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. But hopefully I will have enough resources and I can actually actually be building the house. Right. I'm actually gonna show you a little trick to deal with wolves. If you hop up on just wood, it doesn't work with stone but if you hop up on a wood a wood pile the wolf can't get here because the wolves are repelled by wood they're not actually allowed to go on the wood in this game so it's kind of helpful if you ever don't have anything to kill it with and you want to just carry on collecting resources if you hop on there it will eventually get bored and go away if you're on there and you're being chased by a bear the bear may may go away the bear may not go away but it at least gives you somewhere to hop up on and then think alright where am I going to go from here and plan your escape from a bear because I wouldn't recommend taking on wolves or bears until you have some sort of armor you can kill them with a pickaxe but again I'd personally wait until you have a bow at least so bows are the most efficient way of hunting so even if you have a gun I wouldn't recommend wasting your ammo on a bear or a wolf because you're not actually gonna get anything out of it really because all you get from bears and wolves and pigs are like you'll get cloth and leather and blood but you'll get actually you won't actually get anything to make ammo or anything that is of help to you and is worth wasting seven or eight bullets to kill a bear and three or four bullets to kill a wolf so again I would recommend just avoiding the wildlife until you have enough to build your bow and whatnot but as it's starting to come night we will skip ahead till it comes morning and 
by then I will have enough to make the house hopefully and a furnace and we can show you how that stuff works so I'll see you in a minute guys and we're back as you can see it's now the middle of the day again and we have got some supplies to build a house with we've got some cloth and all fat and raw chicken these are what you get from killing the likes of pigs uh, pigs, um, deer, wolves, uh, not really bears, you get some animal fat from bears, but bears you get loth, uh, cloth, you get mainly the leather, and you get some blood, so at the start I'd recommend killing deers and pigs as they are not going to damage you, they will just run away from you as they start hitting you, and pigs are really slow, so you can run at them, you can run faster than them, so they're really easy to catch up to. Anyhow, let's get on to building. These are your building materials. This is what you need to build. But before we can use that, we have to build wooden planks. But you can, first of all, build a workbench. This will cut two thirds of build time off if you stand in the range of one. But as if you build one now, it won't be on your foundation, so you won't be able to use it in your house. So my way of doing it is if you build eight wooden planks. As a foundation is exactly eight wooden planks. So don't waste time crafting more than eight, because you'll just be standing around wasting your time for now. So build eight, and then we can get build our foundation. And then we can build our workbench, so it'll be inside the house once it's built. Okay, now you scroll down, wooden foundation, and as you see, I have eight, and it is eight, so we'll craft that, and as you can see, it takes a minute, it would normally take about 20 seconds, or, or give or take, so next to a workbench, but as I'm stood next, not next, okay, as you can see, we now have one wooden foundation, as you may have guessed, this is the foundation of your house, as it says, if you drag this into your hotbar on any of these you press say four i have it on four so it's four for me to bring up and obviously i've got on five you press five and six you press six okay so for just the one by one just find somewhere to build i found a nice a massive hidden but it's a little bit tucked away in hacker valley so to place it you just do it so it's green if it's red obviously you can't build it so all green and then just left click and then it goes down easy peasy okay now we want to build a workbench um there you go and again as you can see this is what you have this is what you need it's eight stone and 50 wood so we'll start crafting this this takes about 30 well it is 30 seconds but once this is done, as I said before, it knocks two thirds of your craft time off. So obviously, it's taking a minute. Let's say twenty, yeah, twenty seconds, and that applies for any number of it. Even if you build a hundred foundations, it will take two thirds of the total craft time off. Unfortunately, you can only have one. Even if you build two and you stood next to two, it doesn't add the build time over. Unfortunately. Would be very nice if it did but i think uh the developers wise up to that as it would be very very useful and you could potentially get it down to like no seconds at all being taken okay so now we have our foundation and our workbench the next thing is what we need is four pillars each pillar takes two planks so we'll scroll back up and we'll craft our eight planks Again, you could craft all the wood you have into planks straight away. But I am against that as we will need wood in a second for other building other building things like furnace and a campfire and other things like that. So I would personally do it this way. It takes uh sixteen, twenty-four, uh thirty-two about about 500 wood for one by one so i suppose you could craft minus 42 minus the foundation because you should have already crafted that first 
So you could craft about 42 pillars or 42 planks and do it that way around. But again, I personally prefer doing this way around. Okay. So then drag your pillars onto the hot bar, like you did with your foundation. And be careful not to put a pillar in the middle. Because you can, if you put a pillar down here, you can then not put a wall or a doorway or anything down. And there's no way to remove a pillar on a standard server like I'm on. Even even with C4, it, it can't be removed. The only way it will just eventually decay. But that takes quite a while. So be very careful as to where you're putting them. And you need one in each four of the corners. Like so. Okay, and as you can see, we're now starting to take shape. Next thing you need is wooden walls. And we're going to need three wooden walls. So that is, again, click on your wooden planks. We need 12. And you craft 12, which takes about 7 seconds. And once we've done this, we need to scroll down. Click on the wall. We need 3. And as you can see, it will take a minute. As we have the little icon down here in the bottom right. It says we are next to a workbench. It knocks one third of the time off. So, it is, in some ways, if you don't mind waiting the extra 40 seconds to get your foundation and then put in your workbench it doesn't really save much time doing it the way around in my opinion it'll take about the same amount because you'll have to craft another workbench inside your house oh you might actually get a glimpse of an airdrop here that plane drops those supplies that you can only just see in the distance I think you can't really see them I don't think but it drops crates with supplies in but that again, we'll save that to a later episode. Okay, the next thing we need is a doorway. As you can see again, we need four more wooden planks. So we'll craft the wooden planks in, and then scroll down to the bottom, and then wooden doorway. And then we'll craft this, and as before, drag it onto your hot bar. Right. Also, if you want to rotate it, if you right click or use your your mouse scroller you can rotate it with either one and then just obviously if it's green it can't go down same as foundation and just plunk that down okay and as you can guess the last bit of wood we need is a ceiling scroll down to check we need six wooden planks again so again we're crafting the six wooden planks which again will take about four seconds thanks to the workbench. And then we'll craft in the ceiling. So whilst this is crafting in, the next thing we're gonna have to build is a furnace. This just allows you to turn metal ore into metal fragments, sulfur ore into sulfur, and your wood will turn into charcoal. As to what we do with those, I will explain that in a second. First, we'll put the wall up, the ceiling up, sorry. Okay. For a furnace, let's have a look. We need 15 stone. Yep, we have 41. 20 wood, which we have 267, and 10 low grade fuel, which we currently have zero of. But low grade fuel is here. You need animal fat and cloth, which, as I said before, you get from killing the likes of boars. And deer and wolves and bears and so on. Again, you get, you also get chicken, but I think chicken self expands. You cook that in a fire, which I'll show you how to in a minute, and that will put up your food, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Start off with, click on here. If you press shift and then you press plus, it goes up by 10. Again, it's just a quicker way of doing it. Instead of having to click 10 times, you can just put it up to 10, well, 11, because it always has one. And then you can just knock one off. So you have to click twice instead of nine times. As you can see, we now have nine, well, sorry, 10 low-grade fuel. So we now just craft the furnace in. As I said, this will turn metal ore into metal fragments, which we need for our door. 
Okay, so again, put this on your hotbar, hit the button that it's down as, make sure it's green. Also, try not to get it too close because I'm not sure if they fixed the glitch yet. But if it's through your wall, you can actually access it through the wall so people can just walk up and take what's inside it out through the wall. So we don't want that happening. So as you can see, I've left a bit of a gap around it, so that can't happen. Okay, so with the furnace, hold E and you'll come up with the open menu. Click open and then the nine slots that appear on your right hand side are what is in there. And simply drag and drop both of your metal ore and your sulfur ore along with some wood. And once you have all three, press tab to get out and then just simply press E and set your furnace going. As you might be able to hear, we have another airdrop being called in. Let's see if we can get a better picture. Again, no, the, the airdrops itself has dropped really far off, but that's the plane. Okay, so we now have that going, and this will smelt down the ore, and it will appear in here as, there we go. As you can see, which amount of fragments, from the metal, the metal ore, sulfur from the sulfur ore, and charcoal from the wood. Okay. We'll now craft in a sleeping bag. The sleeping bag, it would cost 15 cloth, and it just essentially means when you die, you can spawn back at your house. So you'll always be able to spawn here, but be careful, because once you die and you spawn back at your house, there's a four minute delay on you know, to spawn at that sleeping bag. But say if I had three sleeping bags down in my house, I could spawn at all three straight away. I could spawn and then die, spawn and then die, spawn and then die without having any delay because it's four minutes per sleeping bag. So that's always something good to keep in mind if you ever want, if you ever have a bigger house, they take up space. But if, say if you have a big house and you have a spare room, you could put say 30 sleeping bags down don't really need that many but it means you could continuously be able to spawn in your house with no sort of delay which is helpful for when you're being raided and if you if you die defending your house you'll have to wait those four minutes you can instantly just spawn straight back okay the next thing is we'll craft a campfire obviously this turns raw chicken into cooked chicken um i will show you the downside of eating raw chicken which I would not recommend doing. It's not the end of the world if you eat raw chicken by accident, but it's not fantastic. As you can see, you have 825 food down here on the bottom right. Oh, sorry, I should explain this earlier. This is your food bar. You get a certain amount of food for eating the likes of cooked chicken or cans of tuna or cans of beans that you can find for other animals. If this drops, Skype. If this drops to zero, you will then start taking damage on your health and start starving to death, which is the best thing is to try and avoid that at all times. Anyhow, we'll now eat the raw chicken. As you can see, I have now been poisoned and I am losing health. And your character starts throwing up, which is not massively pleasant, but it will wear off before you die. Oh, and another airdrop. Also, if you have a stack of something that you want to split, if you right click, well, to eat or to use, and if you split, it will split it in half as best as it can. Obviously, if it's five, it splits it into uh, a pile of three and a pile of two. But with chicken, you want to make it as even as you possibly can, and then put it one onto each three tiles here because each tile will cook separately it will cook two from here two from here and two from here at a set interval so you'll have six cooked chicken at a time instead of stacking all in one where you'll only get two cooked chicken at a time which is very very helpful if you're starving or there are multiple of you say so you and your friend that are starving it means there'll be more food to go around in a short space of time Okay, the next thing we're going to make 
is we will make a door. So I will be back when I have enough materials to make the door because we need 200 metal fragments. So I will see you guys in a minute. Okay. And I had to quickly nip out and go and get some more resources because I was literally about three or four. I was, right, I was 10 metal fragments short of being able to make a door. So, okay. So we've now got well, 224 metal fragments. It's 200 for a door. Again, a bunch of crafting thing. And then metal door is here. As you can see again, need 200, we have 224. So we'll go ahead and we'll craft the door. And then we will place this into the doorway. So this just basically means now, instead of building the shack, it's a little bit more hard. It takes a, 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 a well, quite a while longer as well, but instead of saying I just stumble across it and go, oh, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to break this shack down, and then start hitting away. The only way someone can get into your house now is by using C4. So, and this is going to be about it for the basics. So, the next video will be going to kill rad animals with a bow, we'll go and loot some rad town so we can see like the way the crates work with the different crates the rarity of the crates what we can get in the crates um there may be some pvp thrown in with that if we get a gun but we'll just have a look at the whole looting finding trying to find some guns and crafting some weapons and i have been mr floppy and hopefully these guys will join me in the next episode of let's play some rust see you later guys